think uh, it will be really good if you can use this, this time for some question answer or some comments. But I think uh, if there are comments, comments should be very brief and all questions should be very brief. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Ajay Kumar. I am with the SAGET, South Asian Dialogue on Environment and Democracy. I have a India. Uh, uh, from India, yeah. This, uh, yeah. this is based in India, but it works in all the star countries. My question is uh, to this forum, how we can improve, you know, private member skills? You know, because the civil society has a lot of, uh, you know, advocacy issues, but the, it doesn't go through the, uh, the government in part. Whereas parliament uh, member bills are hardly passing in India. I don't know what is the situation in other countries. So that channel should be available for the civil society to get our you know, advocacy issues addressed. Number two is uh, civil society is also a hub of knowledge and experience. That does not get reflected into the policy making which goes into the standing committees and other committees set up by parliament. So how can civil society engage with, you know, standing committees is the second question. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mazhar Hussain. I am from uh, Hyderabad, India. Because we are in a South Asian gathering, we have to specify because it is Hyderabad and Pakistan also. <laughs> so so uh, I am from India, Pakistan, Hyderabad, that time. Uh, just briefly, I have a comment to make. Uh, you see, about 60, more than 65 years back, we have declared ourselves to be democracies all over South Asia. All the countries in South Asia now claim to be democracies. But unfortunately, I think in India it is a fact, in other countries also you may agree, that uh, our people, whenever we have to go to ask for anything from those in power, whether it is a liberal village government to be prime minister, it's always with folded hands, seeking favors and not demanding our rights and entitlements. So what I'm trying to say here is though we have declared ourselves to be democracies, the mindsets of our people still continue to be that of subjects and they have not been acquired the mindset of citizens. And I think to a very large extent, our political system and the parliamentarians included, they are responsible for perpetuating this system wherein the people are not allowed to excite their rights and citizens. I will give you the example of India in, in, in our constitution. We have got this article 243, most people are not aware of it. Article 243 along with amendments to that article, the art, amendment 73 and 74 amendments to the constitution. The basic core of this article and this amendment was to ensure that it is the people who will decide and the parliamentarians, the elected representatives, the government officials, they will increment, implement the decisions of the people. But unfortunately, that is not happening. And I think it is not happening in India, despite our constitutional provision, despite all the laws to support that. I am sure it is not happening in other countries. And until and unless we can get to this core of democracy, where our people will think that citizens are not a subject, where our people will decide, and the elected representatives and uh, your uh, you know, the government level will implement the decisions of the people. We are not going to have this transparency, accountability, human rights, nothing. So, I'm Bangladesh University Engineering and Technology. I have two brief proposals because uh, there are a lot of good plans to prepare, there are laws, but there is a lack of implementation. But our MPs, they actually come from some constituency, so, uh, if, and they are the lawmakers. So it is, I think it is their responsibility, if they are accountable, when their plan is violated in their area, they should be accountable because no one is going to take the responsibility, particularly for my experience in Bangladesh, uh, they don't want to take the uh, responsibility of violation of the plan. They say it is done by this ministry under this pressure and all that. But I think MP should be accountable in the border and to the people about the violation of the plan, uh, which is a legal document. And second thing, uh, it often happens that we have to choose one, per, uh, one person, uh, maybe there are like five competitors in the election and 
we don't any one of them, but we have to choose one of them. So there should be a no vote in that uh, parliament. That's why uh, I think we can discourage uh, like uh, the people who are like corrupted. They are always in the election. So I think that introduction of no vote can uh, yeah. help us here. And what I would um, speak about here briefly is not within the ambit of this discussion, but the Nepali visit just mentioned connectivity mm. and energy. Mm. So the element of gas is also there. And as we all know, since 20 years, there's a gas pipeline deal between Iran, Pakistan, and India, which is now recently been hijacked by the Americans. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, Iran is like an orphan sitting there. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan has been brought into SARC. Mm -hmm. Why Iran cannot be brought into SAG? A. Because there was an RTD which had Iran, Pakistan and Turkey. Now we have an ECO where Iran is behind the somewhere. But it's no, of no significance. So if we brought Iran, maybe it will become attractive enough for Turkey to come and join us instead of joining the EU. So if this pipeline deal could somehow get through and Iran becomes a meaningful partner in this region, it is in energy terms then, you know, the next step would be Iran coming to SARC and Turkey coming to This is the issue of a consensus. I raised this issue in the morning in my presentation. I raised this issue of uh, disconnect between civil society and parliament in Pakistan. And uh, it's a very uh, important issue. I think, uh, uh, as it was pointed out here, anybody can present a bill. I mean, there is no ban on that. Private members' day, you come out with a bill. But the uh, serious question is, will it be passed? Uh, because in, in some cases, uh, when you want to amend the constitution, there is two third majority, otherwise, simple majority. So only the ruling party can really match laws. But I, I, my suggestion would be that we, in our respective parliaments, come out with uh, amendments in the rules of procedures. Because passing is some one thing, but even seriously, they are not considered very serious. At least there should be uh, serious consideration. Uh, unfortunately, our parliaments, uh, I know about Pakistani parliament, I very don't know much about other parliament. We have very serious problem because mostly uh, parliamentary party leaders, they say, okay, we support the bill. And everybody say we support the bill, but even without knowing about the contents of the bill. Uh, we say, okay, it's passed by law committee, a parliamentary committee. Okay, we had a member there, so if he has passed his, then it, it means it, it's good. So, but I think there should be uh, some, some uh, consideration. For, for example, rules of procedure should uh, can bound uh, parliamentary parties to uh, discuss bills uh, in the party uh, before uh, coming to the parliament so that they uh, are prepared, uh, they know what is uh, on the table. Uh, I, I think this is, uh, this is something that we can begin with. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, there, there has to be some amendments about uh, interaction with civil society. Uh, I, I think it's again very important to have uh, uh, systematic and constant uh, interaction between parliament and the respective civil society. Thank you. Um, uh, it's a very interesting uh, session. And uh, what uh, I have uh, sort of thought of over the years that I've been working, you know, uh, in democracy and governance area, it is very important. We have some very glaring, uh, wonderful examples in Pakistan, in Pakistani parliament, for instance. Uh, the civil society, I would suggest, as uh, one of our colleagues had just uh, mentioned, has to be very proactive in supporting the parliamentarians and the parliamentary legislative work. The oversight work also has to be supported by the civil society. I think it is, the, the, this it has to be, the civil society's strength has to be uh, brought out. Because in Pakistan, for instance, we have uh, made a women's parliamentary caucus, a rising of uh, the two houses across party lines, the women get together, they have been very proactive in introducing laws and how they came forward was not only on the fact that we had a woman speaker first uh, for the first time ever, but also we have a very strong National Commission on Status of Women and the civil society was very strong. 
we passed some wonderful pieces of legislation through that forum where women's uh, legislative performance was much higher than their male colleagues. It was 80% legislative uh, business that was conducted by women alone. So, and, and they were supported by the caucus. The caucus was very really open to the civil society. And uh, there are so many other examples where civil society has reached out to the parliamentarians, convinced them that these are the issues, these are the challenges, and this is how we can uh, promote, um, you know, an X Y Z cause through legislation, through policy making, and through uh, initiating a discourse over that issue. So I think within SARC, we have to have very proactive civil society organizations who should be connecting to each other, not only as this uh, SARC peoples, because uh, this is my first experience of uh, participating in the people's SARC, and I see there is a lot of disconnect in terms of issues amongst them. So focus, um, uh, civil society organizations should focus their um, agenda and they should do a lot of connectivity in terms of learning good practices from each other and sort of doing, a, you know, like a lobby and a, a advocacy that needs to go into this. And this is how the parliamentarians will get strengthened in their real work that they're meant to be doing, that is oversight, legislation and uh, representative role, which is very important. Otherwise, they will keep, uh, you know, uh, doing things. The standing committees are there. They, in Pakistan, for instance, they have the option of inviting uh, public. Uh, my question, I heard Khadr Chab yesterday at the, trans, uh, at the transitional justice uh, discussion. And uh, one of the issues here is human rights sensitivity, which unfortunately didn't get reflected in any of the parliamentarians' talk. And this also seems to be uh, a major issue uh, in terms of you know the, the talk of democracy and accountability. Uh, South Asia is a region that has seen uh, uh, too many conflicts, continues to see too many conflicts, there are uh, too many violations happening, and uh, there are too many uh, issues of justice uh, that are pending. And you know we, uh, we, we throw around words like impunity uh, uh, on a daily basis, yet we are not getting anywhere. Uh, and so my question uh, to the forum is, as a part Parliamentarians Forum, uh, what kind of role do you envisage for yourself to either on a track to diplomacy or on, uh, on a visible level uh, being able to push each other on issues of accountability? I mean, as the gentleman from Maldives said, I think uh, Maldives and Sri Lanka are two examples where SARC very gloriously failed to respond to the challenges of democracy and human rights. Uh, Globally, uh, adult franchise has become almost meaningless. It has been manipulated by corporates. So how to come out of that imagination uh, is a big point. So uh, I have no answers to that, but how to, uh, we, we should uh, put the catalog of right questions at least, how to move away from corporate de democracies in our respective nation states uh, to some kind of participatory democracy. We always go to India. But visa has become so difficult for Bangladeshis to go to India that people have to go to Malaysia, Singapore, Bangkok. Is that what we want? Is that what our country remedy? So I really appeal to you for this. For us to travel from Nepal to Bhutan, very simple, very easy. But why not India? So I hope this, this uh, convergence meeting will pick this issue. The other one is um, we also have difficulty in pushing people's rights, people's laws, like I have failed to reach with the anti eviction law, it has been rejected by the standing committee, and then the Vendors Rights Act. But India has succeeded. So I hope, I really am really looking forward that Sahar will help me carry this forward and I have spoken to a parliamentarian which can help us in that. Thank you. Uh, Bill. But it is defeated by the government, the ruling party, because of they said we will bring the better uh, bill than this. But it's never happened. Therefore, as a parliamentary group, and we can write to respective government saying something more, uh, in kind of an influential way, uh, it can be a 
kind of a good thing to the people he shows. And also, uh, one thing, there are so many parliamentarians here, that we could visit, we have find money somewhere, we could visit, uh, solidarity we visit for the parliaments, the our countries, and bring, uh, bring much more parliamentarian into the this form. And if you directly wrote it to the uh, the speakers and they will allow you, and then can be a kind of a more influential and in more practical way, uh, we can in, uh, bring more parliamentarian into the next people's parliamentarian forum uh, to get more productive discussion into the. But because uh, the Rukshi and Sohar has worked for a very long time on parliament, so it will be really good if we endorse uh, this particular leaflet and from here we can make it forward. And we will not, uh, on behalf of Sir, at least uh, we, can, we can say, but we don't see this as an event. We really want to take it forward and in that we need cooperation and help from everyone including parliamentarians. I think if everyone agrees. So Mr. Chairperson, I think uh, yeah. I have to review our activities also. Yeah. yeah, so when we are discussing about the democratic practices, the whole values of the uh, democratic system, my perceptions regarding the South Asian society, except Bangladesh, I except uh, Afghanistan, I have been all the side countries, I have been the observer of elections, I have attended many times meetings. So what I see, there are many political systems in the world. About 197 countries are the member of the Union. 200, more than 210 countries are in the world. But our South Asian society, if I have to define within the sentence, politically it is an autocratic minded society. Culturally it is a feudal society. Democracy is a very civilized way of life. So when I see the SAR countries parliamentary systems, traditional parliamentary systems, it's not functioning. Just propose it and Vijay? Yeah, yeah. So I think teacher, yeah, you want to say something? Jatin, effective implementation. Sorry? I thank everyone and I especially thank uh, our friend from Afghanistan. She is only, I thought she is only 27 years old. So that's I especially thank for the general.